know, prove this, prove that. I won't go through the entire letter um, because uh, you know you, you you've got it in your handouts. Um, this is the second part of it. Um, one very interesting part of it is the uh, Wireless Telegraphy Act of 1949, um, which means basically if you if you tell somebody, please don't contact me by phone or letter or anything. They've got no choice. They cannot cannot contact you again. Once you've you've um, explicitly told them, do not contact me. They can't. Or you can sit that um, that act on it. You can sue them. It's everything. Um, the call to deliver is important as well. Like I said, one of the other items all recorded so that they can prove that they've received it. You can track it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Um, yeah. Everything. Every. If you're dealing with anybody. Um, you know, in this way, record your delivery, so you've always got proof. They can always, because usually they can always say, oh, we didn't get that, but you, you've got the proof there. What happens if you've got, if you've just had a situation where you've already started paying and then stopped? I've come into new information. That's a, that's a in your life. I've come into new information. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> It's um, I, I, you say that I I don't I didn't actually practice what I preached though because uh, before I started this I was already paying my electricity bill and um, yeah I was doing gas and water but I I, I was like mm, I don't know but you know I, I did it the second time the second year um, and uh, it seems to be worked. Right. So. What effects were you considering to record the injury as well? Did you get a copy of it? Um, well, facts, facts have become sort of a little uh, outdated now, but um, I don't know. I, mean, I think email is. Yeah. Do you think email is? Yeah. Emails, sorry, email is. Email is because it can be used in court as a evidence, you know, as long as you got some printing on, sent to see and everything. Yeah. Um, personally, I mean, I, I, I like I prefer mail, uh, regular snail mail, because, you know, it's harder to uh, falsify. With, e with emails, you can actually take the emails so that when it's read, mm -hmm. how it's received, it sends you back a message, when it's read, it sends you back a message. Yeah, but you can get the same effect with, uh, you know, the, getting a signature, and seeing the signature, uh, yes, somebody signed for it, and they, get, and they receive it. I think it's that issue of the, the risk that relates to it, but the thing is, as you, as you sort of indicated, that people falsify facts received. And um, if you send the facts, you might have a printout from your own computer. If you, if you are doing the facts, do it through a third party, but they give you a receipt in your bank or up bank. But um, I, I, I go in the day just doing the. Um, I know I use, I I use the email um, when I'm challenged to Colchester Borough Council <laughs> and that was really tough on hopefully with my heart and everything and I know the solicitor um, said that I can use the email as evidence so right. that <coughs> can be used in, in, in the court. I, put, I, you know, I prefer letters because um, I've I been fight, fighting council tax as well for, for a couple of years <coughs> and um, uh, the first year I was doing it I ended up with 40 letters and uh, the point is they have to they have to re respond and um, it means they have to sit and, and write a letter and post it and, and uh, you know, make sure it's make sure it's um, it's uh, legally correct and doesn't give the game away um, so they have to put a lot of effort into, into responding to that and the council tax um, yes they've got um, a lot of Digressing here on council tax. Um, yes, they've got a, an armory of, uh, of ways of getting you to pay. Okay, but um, playing council tax is like I don't know if anybody's uh, ever watched uh, Star Trek: Next Generation. Uh, there was an episode where Data, the, the robot, was uh, playing a game against some kind of chess game against a Grand Master, and he got he got beaten. And he went crazy because he, on the computer, how can I get beaten? Um, and at the end of the episode, um, Data basically beat the Grand Master. And the way he beat him is because 
he changed the parameters by which he played the game. He was no longer playing to win, he was playing to not let them win. So he, he frustrated the, uh, um, the opponent and, and won. Now, that's the, uh, that's the sort of ethos I have with the uh, fighting council attacks. They will, they will more than likely get you one way or another, um, unless um, you're very clever and you, you shut them down. And I was able to shut them down at every, every turn until they got to uh, my employer and they, uh, they bullied my employer to, to take the money out of my, um, my wages. Um, and that was because my, my employer got scared. I told them what to do and they, they got legal advice and they, they, they caved. But the council have many sort of ways of getting, getting to it. But I, after that year, I was quite happy because I kept my money for a year. I withheld it from them and I got confirmation from them that I cost them more than they collected from me. So I, can, I, can, I consider that a win. And this year I'm doing a different tr approach and it seems to be working a lot better, so, uh, but I'll get onto that some other time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so anything else before we go on? <coughs> Just what we said at the bottom here, uh, this, the, of the letters we've got, mm -hmm. by John of the Smith, of the family Smith. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another, that's another issue. Um, okay. the, uh, <coughs> um, I'm going into lots of things here. Um, one of the ways they can get you to contract, and this might be new to some of you. Does anybody know about uh, the straw man? Anybody? Any idea? Okay. Um, very, very, very quickly, very briefly. Um, when you're born, your, your parents register you, okay, and you get your birth certificate. Now, the word register doesn't quite mean what you think it does. It essentially means, and well, it's a bit tricky, but it essentially means you hand over title ownership to whoever you're registering with. So when you register your car, your car doesn't belong to you anymore. It's, it's the title ownership belongs to the DVLA or the government. Yeah? You become the keeper not the owner, okay? Um, the same thing when you register a child. Yeah? You hand over title ownership of the child to the state, which is why if you uh, don't send your kids to school or you know, for one reason or another, they can take your kids from you because they're not yours. You've already handed title ownership to the state, okay? Um, so when, when you're registered, what the government does is create a corporation in your name. And that, that name is in um, all capsule letters. That's why if you look at your credit cards or your bills or anything that comes with the post, nine times out of 10, it will be in all capsule letters. Just look at your credit card. Your name's gonna be in all capsule letters. That's not you. That's the fake corporation, I say it's fake, the corporation has made it up in your name, and that's your, your, your game piece to play in the world of commerce. And everything the government does, uh, um, seemingly to you, is actually aimed at this, this corporation. And, um, and what the government actually get you to do is identify yourself as the corporation, and then it can do things to you. Okay, it's like an overcoat, yeah? If they can get you to put the overcoat on, they can now grab the overcoat with you in it and throw it in jail. But until you put that overcoat on, they can't do anything to you. Does that make any sense to anybody? Mm. Is that what you have? Uh, yeah, sometimes that's what they do. When they, when they want you to uh, identify yourself, so they'll put, give you a form and say, print in all you know, print your name. Okay? They want you to say, Yes, I'm that corporation. Now you can act on it. Um, another way of looking at it is that uh, you are one step down from God. As a, as, a, as a sovereign human being, you're one step down from the Creator. Yeah? And um, a simple rule, the, create, the created thing can never be greater than the Creator. That makes sense, doesn't it? 
So, God created you. You're obviously not um, greater than God, whatever that you believe that to be. Um, so, man creates government. Government is not superior to us. It might, might think it is, but it's not. We created it. So it's a great thing come up, we created the creator. So what government does, it creates fictional entities. Your name in capital letters is a corporation. That's called the person. You're not a person. Yeah? You're not a person. You have a person. So it creates all these fictional entities. A person, a taxpayer, a driver, um, a resident, an occupier, whatever. Those are fictional entities. And as soon as you identify yourself as one of these fictional entities, <coughs> you, you waive your rights as a sovereign human being and accept to be one of these entities, lower and subservient to government. Now they can act on you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so whenever you go to court or you get stopped by a policeman, the very first thing they'll say is, what is your name? The name they're, they're looking at is the all capital name. As soon as you identify yourself with that name, now they can act on you. So, sorry. Yeah, I don't because I don't care at that point because this there's I'm aiming that uh, that bill at my straw man. It's not me. They're aiming at, at my at my corporation. So I'm signing for my corporation. I'm, um, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of my corporation. So, anyway. Um, okay. Can I come on? Go on? Or, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the last part of the letter. Do not contact me again. That invokes the uh, Wireless Telegraphy Act. So, um, <clears throat> the last thing I can do here is apply for a warrant of entry to change your meter to a prepaid meter. Okay, and I think the next slide it is. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, application for a warrant of entry hearing. So this might be the point at which you uh, want to retrieve your money and pay. Okay, um, a lot of uh, a lot of people don't want to go to court. Um, uh, you know, court is a very frightening place. Um, it's designed to be a frightening place, would you believe? Um, it's psychologically designed to be frightening. Um, and all the, all the mass media um, is also there designed to make you scared of being there. Yeah? Um, so, again, um, the point of putting the money away, um, bearing in mind that uh, you know, using this, this methodology, you, you, can, you can have up to about a year without uh, Having to uh, having to pay them. Um, this this might be the, the point where you want the whole thing to go away and uh, and and start again next time you get a bill. Um, but you can also go along to the hearing, and uh, it was it was quite funny when I went to uh, <coughs> went to my hearing. Um, they will they will immediately adjourn because they don't expect anybody to turn up. And when I went along to mine, I was the only one there. There were 23 <laughs> names on the uh, on the list. I was the only one who turned up. As I said, most people are too scared to go along. Where's this hearing? Sorry? Where, where was the hearing? Uh, this was um, uh, about two months ago in, um, in Basel. Was it a No, it was just a magistrate's court. So, so yeah, I, I went along and uh, they, it was, again, it was quite funny. Um, the man, guy from Eon was standing there and uh, the uh, uh, clerk said, uh, is there any, uh, how many people do you, do you have on your list today? 23. Um, is there anybody contesting it? Uh, yeah, this gentleman here. The clerk immediately went, oh, uh, okay, um, we're going to adjourn it to... <laughs> and uh, the, the guy from Eon, because you've got to remember, these, all these people are working together. The guy from Eon is working with the clerk and working with the judge and everything. They are working together against you. It's all a game. So um, the guy from Eon realised the clerk was a bit sort of quick to uh, to adjourn it, and he said, "Oh, um, you must be very very busy today, mustn't you?" 
and the, the clerk looked up and went, Oh, yes, yes, we couldn't possibly hear it today. We were far too busy. <laughs> You know, that, and I, I happened to know because I looked on the docket. There was there was nobody else on the, on the, on the docket for the rest of the day. So it's, it's all a game. So and, and also um, after they had adjourned it and uh, set the date and everything, they said, uh, "Okay, you can go now." I said, "Thank you." And I sat there, and then for one minute they sat there going, oh, he, "He's not going." <laughs> And because I sat there, they were forced to go through every one of those 22 cases and talk about every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, if I wasn't there, they would have just gone, stand, stand, stand. But because I sat there, they had to go, okay, what about this case? Did you do this? Yes, sir, yes, my lord, we did that. Did you do, yeah. So what the they had to talk about every single case. I sat there and made them do every single one. So, um, yeah, so, <clears throat> before, before your hearing, um, uh, when, when it's taken to court, whenever you're taken to court, one thing you might notice is that you, you usually have a month before um, a notification to the date of the court date. Okay. They give you a, a big wad of time between those, uh, the, you know, when you get the notification and when you, get, you have to go to court. There's a reason for that. Because they expect you to try and um, resolve the thing before it even gets to court. That's what that time there is for. Okay, so um, before, before you're hearing, the best thing to do is repeat your offer to the uh, utility company. Say, um, you know, I'm You've got my letter. I, I know you've got my letter. I know you must be busy, but um, you know, uh, please return my remittance, and I'll pay you some other one. Um, well, what this is is, uh, has anybody heard of the Freeman movement? Yeah. I know some some of you already. Yeah. Um, well, there's a, a, a process to go through when um, when you're dealing with uh, companies or um, or banks or whatever. Um, it's a, it's a kind of three-step process. The first one you'd have done with your notice of apology that I uh, showed earlier. Um, the, uh, so that's, that's giving them notice and expecting them to, to uh, act on that notice. The second uh, part of the process is to uh, essentially say, well, you've not followed through, you've not re responded to me, but I'm going to give you some extra time. It's like a notice of uh, a fault because they, they haven't really responded, and opportunity to cure. So that's just the second notice. And the third one, if they don't respond, is to um, basically say, um, so, well, you haven't you know, um, rebutted anything I've said, so we have an agreement now because you've been silent on it. It's, uh, it kind of makes sense because if, uh, if I say to you, um, I'm, I'm planning to build a shed in my back garden. If, uh, if you have any uh, objections, yeah, get back to me in, in a week and, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it. If you, if you don't reply to me, you know, just be honourable, I'll send another sort of reminder to you. You know, I'm building a shed, you know, I'll give you another five days to, to get back to me if you've got any objections. If you don't respond in that five days, I'm quite entitled to go ahead and build my shed now because you've, you've been given an opportunity to uh, to uh, you know, rebut and say and say why you don't want it. So, you know, you've agreed with me. So that's the same process that we use with uh, with these uh, with these companies. Now, um, in in your handout, there's a sample of of each of those letters. If you, you know, if you want to play with them, that's uh, that's uh, one way of uh, going ahead with it. Um, the other thing is to go along with the hearing to the hearing with. Uh, the money in cash um, and offer it in you know offer it in person um, in exchange for your remittance and don't be uh, don't be um, fobbed off with a uh, a copy of the remittance because again if you give somebody a check and you say well and they say well we don't accept checks and they say well and uh, you expect them to return it would you be happy if they returned you a photocopy of that check no. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, what happened today? What did happen today? Well, I went to court over this very issue, just to, to basically test this out. Um, so uh, I was quite right in saying that uh, maybe you want to pay them uh, at, this, at this point, um, but you still have the opportunity to, to pay right up until the moment they come with a, with a meter. What, um, what happened was, first of all, I went to court and I was told that it was a closed court. Nobody, no members of the public were allowed in. Does that make you wonder what's going on? Because courts are public places. You know, members of the public are, are supposed to be able to come in and watch the judicial process at work. They, um, they'd actually got a district judge. This is a magistrate court, yeah? They got a district judge. To, to sit on this thing because um, they're scared. They don't like us knowing this stuff. Yeah? Sorry? Right, they don't. They don't want us to, they don't like us, um, uh, you know, getting too smart for our own good and, <coughs> and uh, meddling in grown up affairs, yeah? They, they don't want us to know this stuff. They don't want us challenging their courts. <laughs> They want us to be afraid of them and not want to go there. They don't know what to do when somebody comes to court and, and is not afraid. Yeah? And there is nothing really to fear about it. There really isn't. And this is my second time ever being in court. Um, what's funny is uh, I, had, uh, uh, a, I had a spy pen which uh, um, basically uh, captures video and stuff. I've got it in my top pocket and I'm like, videoing the whole thing. I wanted to put it in here, but uh, yeah, I couldn't do it. Um, this is my second time in court. First time I was like, oh, oh yes, yeah, no, yeah. I can't remember that, I was a bit, I was, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I think I was dancing around as well. Wasn't I? <laughs> so I was really nervous the first time. This second time, I, I reviewed what was on, came out of my spy pen, and there was, a, there was this odd thumping sound. It was like a doom, doom, doom. I was like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah, it was my heart. And it was really slow. I must have been. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, once you once you've been in that situation, you know, just once, and uh, and you know what this is, this is all about. You you really feel that this is, you know, you really get it in your head that this is all fraudulent. Yeah, the fear goes. <clears throat> It really does. And this is all they have against us. Fear. Yeah? This is why you pay your council tax. There isn't any law to, to say that you have to pay council tax. There isn't. Yeah? Exactly. Exactly. We see that group, big green thing and we're like, oh, but no, it's, it's the old geezer behind the, behind the curtain there. No. And, and once you get over that, You'll, you'll find you can walk into these places and not feel feel scared, and you're 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 equipped to to deal with them. Now, of course, um, I went into court today, and uh, the the district judge. We played the name game because, again, the very first thing they try and do is get you to put that overcoat on. Okay, um, I wish I could have brought it because it's quite funny. Um, the judge ran out because I said, um, you know, I said, he, he said, well, I can't, I can't um, proceed if uh, we don't know uh, that you're Mr. Mr. Murphy. And uh, I said, well, look, um, I'm the holder of this. I brought my birth certificate. I'm the sole holder of this, and uh, yeah, um, I, I represent this. There's no, there's nobody, uh, there's nobody else. Uh, who's got this? This is this. This has been allocated to me, so I am the only representative of this of this corporation. And he got up and he ran out of there. <laughs> Literally, he, he got up. Um, I got him back in because uh, I said, um, "Yeah, I'm here as Mr. David Murphy. I'm not. I've not said I'm Mr. David Murphy. I'm here as, which is in the capacity of Mr. David Murphy." He said, "Where do you live?" Oh, Mr. David Murphy lives at uh, blah 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 blah. I didn't say I live there. Yeah, 
he's just trying to get that 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 uh, get you to put that overcoat on. So we went through the name game, um, and uh, then he basically gave up and said, "Okay, we'll, we'll hear from uh, Eon." And he, the guy from Eon did his bit, and literally he said, "Have you got any questions?" I said, "Huh? What?" And he, he jumped in. He said, uh, "What about this brother? I think you're wasting wasting time. I'm going to order. I'm out." And he's gone. It was literally. He's, they, they are scared of us. They're scared of us. Sorry. I did ask. He, he ignored me. He, he just ignored me. And he said that he said no. It's not. I said it's a private call. That's not a private call. It's a closed call. Um, that means so if it's closed, members of public are on there. It's it's not a public call, is it? No. Uh, so it's a private call. No, it's not a private. Call. <laughs> so so yeah, it's uh, this is this is why um, I am just I, I know that I'm I'm on the right track because if you go into a place like that, you have this idea of what a court is, justice. Yeah. If you go in there and they can't be straightforward with you. They can't, they don't want to listen to you. You know there's something up. You know there's something not right about this. What was the judgment? Sorry? What was the judgment? Um, well, I just said he, he granted, the, uh, granted the warrant of entry. Well, he granted Yes. But it was that, you know, I granted it, I'm gone. He was, he was out of there. It's all, it's all facade. Did they shoot you for um, wrong pants and no, no, not in Boxer. I've got an interesting story. Mm -hmm. um, I've decided to try a provision with Andy and Morkel. And um, they said, said to me that why I am to do it. Oh, well, just before you, you say that, A for V is another method very similar to using a remittance method. It's uh, essentially using your signature to, to pay for it, but we'll go on to say. It's, um, and then I've got uh, a claims form to pay for it, and we'll pay to pay for it. So I A for V, that can send it off. You know? Then um, I've got a letter saying that they're, uh, they're going to see a district judge for prior action. So I wait for now, then I've got a letter, letter back saying uh, uh, they're going to press ahead, they, they're going to press ahead with it. So um, I said off some, I can't, I can't remember off, I can't remember from every what, what I sent, I sent, I sent off. And then uh, I've got a letter saying, this is to, to, total crap, as Vin would say, I recall making no such offer. I've got, I've got a letter saying that I apparently made an offer to the Walker Company, I have accepted the offer, and now I've got an order for all the pain, which is totally flat. And this, this does work, because instead of instead of um, just saying, no, look, it's wrong, they've, they've invented this little thing that I made an offer to pay when, when I didn't. Mm -hmm. So it does work. Yeah, as I said, when, if this was, if this, all I'm saying is total bullshit, Okay, then you would expect to, if you went into court, they'd be very straightforward. Look, this is bullshit. This is why this is bullshit. Okay, um, we'll lay it out for you. You're wrong. And you'd go, yeah, okay. Right? Okay, but this is not what's happening. The only reason they go for a, uh, a warrant of entry is because your remittances are paying the, the, the bill. Yeah, they can't cut you off because you're paying the bill. Okay? If if I was wrong about this, they would immediately cut me off. Well, I'm just well, sorry. What was when your meter's outside? Well, my meter is outside. Okay. Yeah. They, they can't cut you off because you're paying the bill. Mm. Yeah. That's why you know that this is this is a this isn't bullshit. Ultimately, you're going to have to pay. The, you're going to have. They, they're not going to come into your house, aren't they? And they're going to take stuff or whatever to. Well, no, they, they 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 want to change the meter to a prepaid one, but um, but there there's there other there are other ways. I don't want to go and um, take you guys to that that extent. Okay. Um. This is. I'll tell you why we. we you know, I, I'd like you to do this, or I'm not saying I'd like you to do this. I'm, I'll give you a reason why why I think you should do this. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't think you should go as far as I've, I've gone. I'm, I'm still sort of uh, blazing the trail here, okay? Um, and I'll, you know, if I do this talk again, I'll have gone past this point and uh, explored the other options that, uh, there, are, there are a few other options to go down, but I don't want to go through them with you now because it's, uh, you know, I haven't gone through them yet, so, so this, is, this is all brand new, okay? Um,